Next, a medical first. A 13-year-old British boy with severe epilepsy has become the first person in the world to have a new device fitted in his skull to control seizures. Oran Nolson had multiple seizures every day, which were potentially life-threatening. But he's now been fitted with a so-called neurostimulator, which sends electrical signals deep into his brain. The eight-hour surgery last October inserted two electrodes deep into his brain until they reached the thalamus, a key relay station for neuro no, neuronal information. Now, the ends of the leads were connected to the neurostimulator, a 3.5 centimeter square and 0.6 centimeter thick device, which was placed in a gap in Oran's skull, where bone had been removed. Epilepsy seizures are triggered by abnormal bursts of electrical activity in the brain and the device emits a constant pulse of current aiming to block or disrupt the abnormal signals. Oren's mother Justine says the treatment's been life-changing. Oren's seizures um, obviously were um, high in frequency so he was having anywhere between say 50 to over 300 seizures a day and um, the impact of that meant that day-to-day -day life was difficult, even watching a TV programme, eating, um, all had safety implications. Um, and it, it, cognitively, he'd lost skills and it had affected every part of his childhood. We've seen a dramatic reduction in seizures. Uh, we've seen a shortening in length of seizures and severity. We haven't had to resuscitate Oren since the device was switched on, which is just amazing because we were frequently having to resuscitate him. Um, and we're starting to see some skills develop again, which is just really promising, really exciting, really hopeful. OK, well, for more on that story, let's speak to Martin Tisdall, who's the consultant paediatric neurosurgeon at Great Ormond Street Hospital in London, who performed the surgery. Welcome to the programme. It's nice to talk about something positive. Tell me more about how that came about. This is a trial that we've been carrying out in partnership with um, engineers at Oxford University and doctors at King's College Hospital to treat children who have got a very severe complex form of epilepsy called lennox gasto syndrome. And you heard there the massive impact that the epilepsy was having on Oren's life. He started having seizures when he was three years old and they progressively got worse since then. Um, at one point he was having hundreds of seizures a day. So he's been part of this trial to allow us to understand the use of deep brain stimulation for this type of epilepsy. Um, he's now had the stimulator in place for six months. And what's really, really pleasing is to hear the huge impact it's had on his life and not only his life, but the life of his family as well. So that he's really beginning to be able to do some of those things which a normal 13 year old would do uh, and to start to get some of his life back. And is this something that can be rolled out much more widely then, these kind of devices? We're just at the start of the research period. So Oren's the first child to have this new device fitted. We've got plans to implant a further three children as part of the initial part of the study, and then a further 22 children after that. What's absolutely vital with this type of research is to see if it works across a range of children and to really document very carefully what the results are. And then we hope that, yes, in due course, we can use that data to make it available for many more children across the UK and across the world. And what are the risks associated with this surgery when it comes to fitting that device? So. The surgery involves placing very fine electrodes into the brain. The electrodes are less than two millimeters in width. Um, and actually, the risks from that are very low. I think what's important is that this type of deep brain stimulation technology, indeed, placing the electrodes has been used for many years in other situations. So for example, it's well established in um, adults with Parkinson's disease. It's been used much less uh, in epilepsy, but the history of, of deep brain stimulation allows us to understand the risks very well. The other thing to say is, and I think, I think you heard this listening to Oren's mum, this is a child who was having very severe, almost life-threatening uh, seizures and was requiring resuscitation and multiple hospital visits. So actually, we're making the situation safer rather than more dangerous with this type of minimally invasive surgery. Understood. And I was just reading about Oren's story in particular, that 
his family say that they know his treatment is not a cure, that they're optimistic he will continue to emerge from the shadow cast by his epilepsy. Um, so this is kind of a sticking plaster then, but it's not a long-term solution? No, I wouldn't say that. I think the, the point is that um, we haven't completely cured him of his seizures. He has had a dramatic 80% reduction in his daytime seizures. And, and what's more important is he stopped having those very nasty generalised seizures and he stopped having the drop seizures which are associated with falling over and, and injuring yourself or even fracturing bones. He is still continuing to have some of the smaller seizures. And so in a way, there's more work to do. There's more tuning to do of this device to see if we can uh, improve the way it works even more. We're really hoping that Oren's going to be part of a further study where we're going to personalise the treatment to him so that the device can respond to his individual brain waves. And so we hope that by uh, that sort of iterative process, we'll be able to even further improve uh, his epilepsy. And it's, it's not a transient effect. We hope that that effect will be lifelong for him. OK, that's incredible. Well, thank you, Martin Tisdall, consultant, paediatric neurosurgeon. It's incredible uh, the work that you've done. And uh, we continue to uh, stay optimistic for Oren and his family. Thank you very much.